and at least 23 persons have been confirmed dead and many others injured following a tanker explosion this morning at the Felele exits of Lokoja, the Kogi state capital. Over five vehicles were completely burned on the road crash and eyewitnesses say some of the victims include students of Kogi State Polytechnic. And confirming the casualty figure to journalists, the sector commander of the Federal Road Safety Corps in Kogi State, Idris Fika, says at least 23 bodies have been pulled from the wreckage. The accident occurred after a truck laden with premium motor spirit lost control following a brake failure and rammed into five other oncoming vehicles. Eyewitnesses, however, say over 50 people may have been killed in the blaze, including some residents who were waiting to board commercial vehicles by the roadside. To talk on this, we are now joined by Ehi Eden, who is a safety consultant. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Eden. It's so good to be here. I mean, as a safety expert, uh, when this kind of accident happens, what should be the first safety precaution one should take? <clears throat> Well, it's so sad to hear all that happened. I, mean, for, I followed the, the, the news earlier on, and uh, it's so heartbreaking to see how many uh, Nigerian citizens that we lost in the twinkle of an eye. I think this is very pathetic, and, um, and uh, it's not what's happened for the first time. It keeps happening. But I think generally, in, in, in as it concerns public safety, when these kind of things happen, the first thing that we have to do is to stay away from the scene of the accident because... The more we, the more we try to 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 clock into that accident scene to see what is happening, we can increase the number of casualties. And the first thing is for us to first stay from the scene of the accident so that we can reduce the the number of casualty as it happens. Then allow those that have the authority, the responsibilities, the capability to go in and rescue people, allow them to rescue people. Because when this kind of thing happened in the country, even the helicopter crash that happened in Lagos uh, some time ago, what the first thing you see is that people crowd the area and those that need help, help is not able to come that way because those who would have who would have who, who would have been able to help them come with help, but they are not able to assess the scene of the accident. So this is one thing we must learn. When it happens, we first take it, take it back off for a while and, and study the situation so that we can allow help to come uh, to the to the victim as quick as possible. Mm, I mean, I agree with you. The images are so graphic. I mean, uh, looking at them and seeing uh, the pictures from the screen there. I mean, you also mentioned that this is not the first time we've seen things like this happening, which is completely true. But the question is, what are we not doing right in preventing, in preventing this kind of accident? Because some of them are quite preventable, if you, you know. Yeah, most of these accidents that we have seen happen in Nigeria, most bulk of them, a number of them are preventable. But I think three things we should be looking at categorically, which of course I think we should focus on one of them is the, is the state of the vehicle that's moving on the road. Another one is the state of the road the vehicle is moving in. And the third one is the fitness of the driver driving the vehicle. I think it, it has reached a time where we start putting this together in, at the front of our conversation as it concerns road safety in Nigeria. Until we are able to discuss this critically and look within us and, and profile possible lasting solutions, I mean, to, to combat this spate of accident and 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 incessant loss of lives. I mean, it will, will be in this state. I think one, one primary, one principal thing on this on, among these these three issues is the condition of the vehicles. If you've seen the trucks that ply on Nigeria road, you you will be wondering if they were checked or if they where they departed from. If somebody actually looked at this truck before they entered our roads, I think we need to go back and look at the state of our trucks. I mean, some, most times these trucks they were loaded in, in, in a depot or, or wherever they were loaded from. Somebody loaded these trucks. Somebody saw the state of these trucks before they left where they, where they loaded and, and going to, to, to offload this, this, this fear. If a truck is not fit, one, we shouldn't even load those trucks. And if we can start, I mean, mitigating this from the point of loading, it will help us a great deal. If this truck that, that, that fell today, if that truck was empty without, without, without content in it, we wouldn't have had what, what we had today. But because the truck is loaded with content and see, see, I mean, fall on the, on the on road, I, I know some people like this, come on, this, this site, I mean, it will take a whole, lot, a whole lot of time for people to forget all that happened in, in the Kogi state as of today. It's so, it's so, it's so heartbreaking. 
completely agree with you. I mean, and staying on that matter of the trucks and the state of vehicles that ply our road, isn't it time that we also begin to consider, you know, uh, other means of transportation, especially for the heavy trucks that we always have on our roads on a daily and on a consistent basis? What's your thought on that? I totally agree with you. Uh, looking at the real option, it, it, at, the, at the real option is a very strong possibility. But you know that in Nigerian race system um, is it, appalling. We're just trying to re rejuvenate that again. But when you look at when you take that back and look at some other countries where trucks ply the road, it's not it, Nigeria is not the only country where we have trucks on the road. But when you when you go to other countries, look at the trucks that we have on the road, you, you will be happy to even see those trucks on the road. The trucks we have, it's not just the, the trucks we have on the road, they are not roadworthy. We need, we need strong regulations as it concerns the worthiness of these trucks on the road. And that's why most of them I get worried when, when you see uh, vehicles that, 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 that look decent, uh, they are being stopped on the road perhaps because maybe one of the, one of the traffic lights uh, is broken or it's not, it's not fu functioning properly. They are being stopped and, and, and being made to uh, be impounded or whatever they have to do with them. But yet you see truck vehicles that, that visibly you see that they are not supposed to be on the road, they are allowed to apply this road. I mean, that truck that loaded came from somewhere. I mean, it passed many checkpoints, it passed many road safety officers, it passed many police officers. Come on, before it got to Kogi State, if somebody has, I mean, stopped this truck along the line that this truck cannot be on the road, we would have been able to actually trap this hazard before it got to the people that it got to today. It just, it just painful, honestly. I don't know what to say about this issue. The truth is that this is this is heartbreaking. We shouldn't, I mean, people have died. Can we make a decision and say, let this be the last, Let's that, let this be, be where it stops? But no, this is, it will be at the front burner today, but I tell you in five, six, seven, ten days, this issue will be totally forgotten and we are back to normal. Okay. And it's so painful. Yeah, I agree with you, it's so painful. Before I let you go, how easy is it to access help in this kind of situation? And who should we look up to? Where do you know people run to when things like this happen immediately amidst confusion uh, that will be going on also when things like this happen? Well, I, I, the immediate help most times when nothing happen on Nigerian roads, the immediate help you get come from road safety. I, will most, I think we must applaud the work that they do because most, most times the immediate help comes from them. But that is not even enough. I think every security apparatus we have in the country should be trained on what you, on, on what you call a primary response. Like most countries, the security officials, they are, they, are, they are trained as responders. But in our country, policemen down the road, they should be trained as responders because in such a critical time, you need, you need those skills at this time to be able to, be able to uh, I mean, respond to people and, and limit the number of casualties. But it doesn't happen. But I think government needs to really uh, go back and look into this. And there are experts that can fix this thing. There are experts that can help government in such situations. But most times, you find out that the same people are being recycled, recycled over and over again. And the experts that are really trained in this area, they don't talk to them when, when such things happen. And that's why we're in such condition. Mm. It, it's, it's so sad. Is. Safety consultant Ehi Eden, thank you so much for your contributions and keep safe out there as well. My pleasure, you too.